Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be on Kua watches. I actually visited their flagship store in Kyoto. I just want to give you guys a peek into what it's like to buy a watch from their flagship store. And I'm also going to be reviewing one of the watches I purchased there, which is called the Old Smith. So the store is located in a semi-basement where there's a U-shaped bar in the middle of the store where a lot of the associates are there to help you choose your watch. It was pretty busy when I got there, so the brand is definitely catching the attention of a lot of people. On the bar counter, you'll see their watches and straps on display, and you're free to try on any of the watches and any of the strap combinations. It's kind of similar to visiting an Apple store, it's a very open concept. And I think this was a great decision they made, because other watch stores, the watches are behind glass cases, so you're less likely to try on the watch. One thing that I noticed at the flagship store is that a lot of these watches are actually cheaper to buy them at the store versus buying them online. For example, the Old Smith is 64,800 yen in store, which is about 560 Canadian, whereas if you buy it online, it's about 780 Canadian dollars. I'm not exactly sure why it's like this, but I'm assuming this is an incentive to visit them in store. Now here's some footage of me trying on some of their different watches, and again, I really appreciate being able to try on the watches and look at them without having an associate having to help me. I have a 6 inch wrist, so you can see that most of their watches are more on the smaller side of things, which I really appreciate because of my small wrist, but that's something to keep in mind if you have a large 7.5 or 8 inch wrist. I'll also note that you can mix and match any of the strap or bracelet options that they offer. A lot of their watches include a free strap of your choice, and they all have quick release spring bars so you can easily swap out the strap. By the end of our visit, both my girlfriend and I decided to buy a watch. And while her watch took about 15 to 20 minutes to get, mine took actually the next business day. And the reason why is because they actually assemble the watches inside the store. You can take a peek at what the watchmaker is assembling through the window. And I think this was a great choice because it allows customers to see the watch assembling process in real time. So like I said before, I had to go back the next business day to pick up my watch. And something really interesting happened this time. While I was waiting to pick up my watch, there was someone different working behind the counter that I haven't seen before. And a lady beside me called him over and whispered, asking him if he was the founder of Kuo, to which he said yes. I ended up chatting with him for a bit, and even getting a photo with him, and I think it's so cool that the founder of Kuo also works at the flagship store sometimes. Overall, I was pretty impressed with the Kuo flagship store. I really appreciate the open concept and being able to hold the watches myself. And the watches here are discounted compared to buying them online. So if you are visiting Kyoto, I highly recommend you check out the Kuo flagship store. And on that note, let's switch gears and go to the unboxing and review of the Kuo Old Smith. Alright, so let's go ahead and unbox this Kuo watch. So it comes in a pretty plain black paper sleeve. And once we open that up, we get more paper. This is kind of like a cardboard box. I don't know if this was done for an eco-friendly measure or to cut costs, but it's probably a combination of both. So let's go ahead, open that up. And that is the Old Smith, but we're going to skip that for now. Let's see what paperwork they've given us. I actually noticed the paperwork's uh, it's a bit more detailed than usual. So if we open this, kind of gives you instructions. Oh, sorry, this is the warranty. We have a user manual, how to set the watch, things like that. I think it even shows you, yeah, it shows, you know, this is a screw down crown. It very clearly shows you how to set it up. It gives you a caution on watch magnetization. So my impression is that this these instructions are showing that the the people that buy this watch, they they may be this may be their first watch. So the you know Kuo kind of recognizes that. So they really put these clear instructions on how to set the time, you know, what's a screw down crown, what's magnetization. I actually really appreciate that. You know, they really make it clear. You know, the instructions are very simple, right? Very simple, you know, not too detailed. You know, if you look at an instruction manual for like a Casio or like a Seiko Citizen, I find them to be quite long sometimes, but this one is quite simple, which I actually appreciate. So let's go ahead, let's look at this Old Smith. So initial impressions, let me actually first start by unscrewing the crown. I'm gonna un open it up. Let's change it to 1010 so you guys can see the logo. All right, so first impressions. Let's talk about the case first. So this is a bronze case. I chose the bronze one because you don't see too many watches with a bronze case. There's definitely some out there. I think Hamilton, Oris, you know, some of those brands may have some bronze cases. And the appeal 
or detriment of bronze cases is that they have patina. So the the case will actually oxidize and kind of show aging over time, whereas something like stainless steel won't, and you know something like 18 karat gold won't either. It might show some scratches, but the color won't change for those, you know, stainless steel and gold. But you can see here, the patina has already started. Look at that. Uh, it doesn't look new anymore. You know, there's some discoloration now on the side of the case. I don't know if I can show you that closer, but you know, those aren't smudges. You know, I can wipe this on my shirt just to make sure. No, so those are permanent patina, whatever you call it, what I wanna call it, discoloration, patina, aging. I've only had this watch for, you know, two weeks and you can already see that there's some aging on the case. So some people like that because you know, it makes the watch feel vintage and, you know, each watch kind of patinas differently. So it kind of makes it more personal. And you can see that the general vibe of this watch, this is like a military field watch. So, you know, I paired it with a suede brown leather strap because I wanted it to look like an old rustic watch. So I felt like the bronze really complemented that. So for me, this was like, you know, it made sense to pair it with the bronze, but some people may not like that. So that's the first thing I want to say about the case. Second thing is the size. So to do that, let me put this on my wrist and I'm going to show you that Kuo watches, one thing that I really appreciate is that they're actually quite fitting. And some people may call that small, but I'm going to say that it's fitting. So you can see on my six inch wrist, it fits pretty nicely. And that's because my wrists are really small. And some people, if you have, you know, a large seven and a half, I don't know if anyone has an eight inch wrist, but I'm sure they do. You know, you might find this watch to be quite small, but for me, this watch is like perfectly sized. You know, it, a lot of watches that I wear, because I like so many different types of watches, unfortunately, a lot of them are honestly too big for me. You know, like an Omega Speedmaster with its 42 millimeter diameter is just too big, but this one, is a perfect size so kuo in general most of their watches were smaller for the general population but if you're asian or just you know you have thin wrists like myself you know these watches really fit your wrist it really feels like you know proportional to my body which i really appreciate because i feel like a lot of watch companies are just starting to make bigger watches so this one is kind of going against the grain it's trying to make watches that are more for small wristed people and more of a vintage look as well. The next thing I want to talk about is the dial. So I actually, I really like this dial because, you know, I feel like with the kind of the grainy texture of the dial, plus the black markers, the solid black, sorry, our indices, it kind of makes it look like it's floating. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but yeah, it looks like the, the numbers are slightly floating. So that part I like. I also like how it's very legible. Right? I feel like in low light conditions, in bright conditions, cloudy conditions, you know, the contrast makes it very easy to read. So I'll give them kudos to that. Also, it's a simple watch, right? It's clean, but I don't think it's boring. Like it's, it has that vintage look. So they've been able to achieve that, you know, without making it too complicated or too boring. Interestingly, they say mechanical, at the six o'clock and I find that most watches if they say mechanical that suggests that it's just a hand winding watch but this is actually using a, a Seiko movement no display case back but this is uh this is using an automatic Seiko movement which I forgot what it is but I'll put it in the description below um it's an automatic watch so you can wind it so I'll unscrew the crown so you can wind it so that is you know a hand winding part but it's also automatic there is a there's a rotor inside that will wind as you move around. So dial's very nice. You know, it gives you that military vintage feel. And, you know, Kuo, I think is kind of trying to, they're trying to achieve that dressy look, which I think this falls underneath. Like they're not going for the sporty look. You know, they're not going for the aggressive look. So if you're looking for a watch that's, you know, more classy, more classical, you know, more uh, formal, I think Kuo really checks that box. All right, so last thing I want to talk about is the build quality because Kuo was established 
in 2020. So it's a four year old company. So, you know, I guess you could call it a micro brand. I'm really not sure what to call it. It's a startup brand. It's new. And what I usually find with new products is the quality control isn't that great. And, you know, with some of those Kickstarter watches, you know, the crowd crowdfunding watches, you know, the quality isn't there. But for this watch, the quality is actually there. You know, the build quality of this watch is quite impressive in my opinion. Now this watch was a bit pricey. I want to say it was like 550 Canadian dollars in total. It's actually cheaper to buy it in store than to buy it online. I don't think people know that, but go to the Kuo store in Kyoto. I'm pretty sure the prices there are cheaper, especially with the yen. Uh, you know, the currency, the Japanese yen is down right now. So it is definitely cheaper in general to buy stuff from Japan. So about $550, you know, it's not a cheap watch. You know, Kuo does not sell cheap watches. I would say it's kind of the mid to low, mid to affordable line. So yeah, if you want to drive, drop 500 bucks on a watch, this is a respectable choice. You know, I'm actually quite impressed by Kuo, you know, Honestly, you know, they have so many ads on Instagram and Facebook and wherever. I thought they would kind of be a sham, to be honest. I don't know. That's kind of mean to say. They, I just wasn't sure what to expect from them. But after wearing this watch, you know, they really are serious about watchmaking. These are actually genuinely well-made watches. These are not just like your Kickstarter microband watch. These aren't, you know, AliExpress watches. They're actually very well-made. So... Really good job, Kuo. So anyways, that is all for my video on Kuo. Thank you so much for watching. It was really an interesting and enjoyable experience to get to know, you know, the founder of Kuo, going to their, you know, flagship store, trying on the watches and, you know, in, in the end, like I bought a watch because I was impressed by them. I wasn't actually gonna buy a watch from them at first. You know, I was just gonna be there to kind of tour the place, see what it's like, but they sold me. You know, they show me that they're able to make really nice quality watches. So that's why I pulled the trigger on this Kuo Oldsmith. And I do recommend it to anyone else who's interested in kind of a classy vintage style Japanese watch. So on, on that note, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos. And as always, I will see you guys next time.